Hello, welcome to the reading on electronic devices tutorial. If you're watching this tutorial in YouTube, I do recommend that you open the mymap that comes along with it. And I'm going to give you the web address to the mymap fairly soon. If you're watching this video on the mymap, I do recommend that you click on the link that is right above my head so you can continue watching the video in YouTube. The main advantage of watching the video in YouTube is that you can expand it to be full screen and you can set it up to be in high definition. And that is going to help me considerably in order to show you text of different sizes and for you to be able to read it all well. Very good. So what is this tutorial about? This tutorial is about taming technology. It is not necessarily about a specific device and a specific reading application, but more about what do you do with technology and what technology allows you to do. And the main idea is for you to get in control of the technology and not let things go the other way around in which it is the technology that is determining what you do and what, what you don't do in real life. So the main purpose of this tutorial is to tame technology. And in order to do so, we are going to perform a critical use of electronic readers. That is, we're going to spot all the qualities of electronic readers that go beyond what print can give us. And then we're going to see some of the reasons why we should not probably be using electronic readers. And once that we have a good balance of pros and cons, we're going to be able to have an awareness that would allow us to use readers in a lot better way. This entire tutorial is set up for it to work with open educational resources. While the tutorial can also help in any type of reading that you might be doing with an electronic device, well, we are at the right moment for open educational resources to be adopted at a mass level. And well, it is important that you know how to use well electronic readers because many of these open educational resources come to you in a digital form. And finally, the life of this tutorial, it is more or less five years. That's my guess. I cannot really tell. But if I were only covering the technical aspects of an e-reader, probably would be very short because technology is constantly evolving. However, in here, we're going to tackle more so the human aspects rather than the technology aspects of using e-readers. So therefore, the life of this tutorial should be a little bit longer. Very good. Here is the link to the my map of this tutorial, and you will find it in tiny.cc slash e-reading. In this application that I use for my maps, there are several different interactive features, and these are the basics of it. If you would like to collapse one of these branch structures, basically what you do is you click in that minus sign. If you would like to open an entire structure, you can click on the plus sign and it would be the opposite type of behavior. So this is the basic way in which you can interact with the branches. And you will notice that each one of these nodes has a little arrow that is pointing to the right side. If you click on any of these arrows, you are going to be sent to the right moment in the YouTube video. And this will help you not to have to see through the entire video if you would like to watch only a part of it. So in other words, the my map is a way to navigate the video that it's in YouTube. Very good. So I am going to collapse all of these. And now I'm going to start with the critical uses of technology. And specifically, we're going to be talking about e-readers. Why should we use an electronic reader? Well, probably the most important reason is because the content is already in digital form. And this will apply to many of the books that you can buy commercially and many other publications that you can buy commercially. But remember that this tutorial is set up in the context of open textbooks or open educational resources, specifically textbooks. So the content is already in digital form. And one of the reasons why you're getting these open textbooks at no cost whatsoever 
is because there are no authorship costs. The other reason is because it doesn't cost to produce them, they're in digital form, and it doesn't cost to distribute them, they're in digital form. So that's one of the main reasons why we should use electronic readers. You can just go and grab the publication and start using it right away. Very good. The other reason is because it is very convenient to carry your books. And normally, carrying one of these is a lot easier than carrying many books in a backpack and their respective notebooks. Another reason that is normally presented as why people use electronic devices for reading is because they have access to their textbooks 24-7. This one is a little bit strange to me because um, you can also have access to your books 24-7, but it might be related to the idea of carrying your books anywhere and then in that location be able to access them 24-7. Another good reason of why you should be using electronic readers, especially when you are accessing books that are in EPUB format, is that you can change the font of the book. And this is a very handy thing to have. I have been reading different books with different font sizes and it does work well for me. I can change from one font size to another depending the type of lighting conditions I have, the type of device I am using, and sometimes it is just nice to scroll through many pages as you read very big font. Sometimes it is nice to just read an entire page with small font. But the main point is that the device allows you to decide what type of font you will have in the publication and that it can become um, very handy when it comes to your reading of the course material. Another important feature is the search utility in the electronic reader. At any moment you can go and search for a specific term and you will get all of the instances within that publication where that term appears. And that can also be very helpful for studying or for doing exercises or just analyzing the content that you're reading. And finally, you have annotation tools like you have in regular print books and you can highlight the content, you can take notes, you can bookmark many different pages and then you can perform some basic drawings on top of the text. So all of these are good reasons of why we should use an electronic reader for open textbooks. Now I am going to jump to the reasons why electronic readers probably are not for everybody. So the very first thing that I would like to mention is that when people are reading from a screen, especially if there's light coming from the screen towards your eyes, it can become tiring after a period of time. So the first pages might be fine, probably the hundredth page will not be that fine after having that light being emitted towards your eyes all the time. There's also some initial research that says that when you're exposed to the frequency of the light of an electronic reader for sustained periods of time, well, it can alter your sleeping patterns and things like that. So obviously, a screen that does not emit light is going to be better for reading purposes. But at the same time, if you have any type of publication that has a video on it or some type of interactive application, watching that video in a screen that doesn't emit light might become not too good. So there's a balancing act to do there, but this could be one of the reasons why this doesn't work for everybody. Another reason is how much you are going to read. Based on the research that we have covered, well, there's different lengths of readings that can be done in different types of devices. It seems that we're finding that normally when you read from a desktop or a laptop computer, the amount of time that you spend reading is not that much. And it might be related to factors like how are you sitting while you actually read in, in a laptop or a desktop computer. It also might be related with how many notifications you might have around you in one of these um, computers. In tablets and cell phones, it is a little bit different. It seems that students are spending more time reading open textbooks with a tablet or a cell phone, but also you have to um, 
understand that if it's too long, it also becomes tiring. And finally, the medium that is cited as the most appropriate for very long periods of time reading is print. And, and well, it depends the type of reading that you might have in your class that this would be appropriate or not. The type of annotations that you can do in an electronic reader are different than in a regular print publication. You normally cannot really handwrite very well on the screen. I know that many applications um, allow you to do so, but the actual interface in which you can do something with the screen and how well the screen collects that input is not up to par yet with a print medium. But I don't doubt it that it will be there at some point in the, in the future. Another reason it might be that typing is easier in computers than in mobile devices. If you are in front of a laptop or a desktop, it might be fairly easy to type an annotation into your e-reader because you have an entire keyboard. But if you're in a mobile device, thumbing your way through might not be as easy. These days, there are many electronic devices that allow you to have voice input but they are not ready just yet so it becomes fairly difficult to do all of the typing in a mobile device using just a smaller form of a keyboard another reason why you might not want to use e-readers or why they're not for everybody is because some publications especially those that are in the cloud on the internet are going to require you to have constant internet access in order to be able to to read the book and some of you might not have that constant internet access available to you so in some instances you might be limited by your internet connectivity in order to study the material another reason is that well when you need to download the, the entire material because you know that there will not be any internet connection to the place that you're going to be um, reading or studying, well, you need to download the entire content to your electronic device. And sometimes that is not an easy proposition. It depends the publication. Very good. At the same time that we can change the size of the font and have a better reading experience because the size of the font is appropriate to what we want, well, there's a problem that comes with it, and it is the pages in your publication get repaginated, and the content in the book will be found in other locations, and it will become a little bit difficult to navigate your book. And this will become evident whenever your professor is in front of the class and asks you to go to page 73 of your textbook, and you will be staring back at your professor wondering what type of font he has or what is the size of the font she has and and well depending on that font size the pages that you will be able to access are different from one reading experience to the other so that might not be for everybody specifically for instances in which the professor is going to make references to the book on a regular basis in the classroom then another reason is because studying is different than reading. Normally we read by keeping our eyes in a single text, but we normally study by placing many different texts and things in our, in our field of view in front of us. And that's how we jump from one to the other. In order to do this jumping from one to the other in an electronic device is a little bit difficult and you might get lost along the way. And finally, one of the reasons why e-readers are not for everybody is because you might just like paper. And it could be the physical object, it could be how you draw on it, it could be that you keep the physical copy after you have read it, and so on. So it might be that you just like print and that is the end of the story. So we arrive to the moment in which we are going to ask the question, well, are print textbooks better than digital textbooks? Well, probably that is not the right question. 
We're not really in the business of comparing technologies. Besides, each one of these technologies is going to be evolving constantly. So any evaluation that is done today might not be that valuable tomorrow. So there's a constant process of change that, well, we're not really in the business of doing that. The main objective that we are after is learning. So we need to do whatever it takes with each medium in order for us to learn as much as it is possible so we can do well in the courses that we're taking. It might be related to your individual needs. If you really know a lot about computers and you feel really comfortable with them and it is not easy for you to get lost using information devices, well, it might be appropriate for you. If you don't feel that comfortable with your computer knowledge manipulating the device and going from one page to the other, it might be that you have to be trained more in order for you to be able to use that resource well. Another thing that might make individual differences from one student to the other is that students have different learning practices. And it depends how it is that you absorb the content and how you learn that will determine your specific needs. So it might be related to that. And finally, there are different types of courses that work differently with different type of e-readers. So, for example, if you're taking a course in literature, you're going to have a very different experience with an e-reader than if you're taking a course in physics or in an exact science. So, it depends the course that you're taking and how the actual course and the professor in that course uses the e-reader or the textbook that the e-reader will become manageable, unmanageable, or, or just inadequate. And finally, the main idea about all of these, this tutorial and, and the entire idea behind the tutorial is that you should start engaging in a critical use of your device. And for that, we need you to be metacognitive. In other words, you need to think about the learning processes that you're going through in order for you to really know if the electronic device is working or not in your specific case. And at the end of the day, following that question, well, it's not that we need to pick one or the other. Normally, people feel that once that they go with the electronic reader, they are committed and that that's the only thing that they should use. And well, that is not really true. Very well. So now we are going to cover how to read on electronic devices. And the very first thing that we're going to tackle is for how long are you going to read? If the answer to that question is for not too long or a short period of time, I do recommend that you use a desktop or a laptop computer because they are going to allow you to do annotations in a lot faster way than if you are working with a mobile device. Nonetheless, if you have to read for a sustained period of time, using a tablet or a cell phone might be better because it's going to allow you to sit or to adopt a posture that would allow you to read for a long period of time. So I would like to show you an application that is called Blue Fire Reader. And these are the different type of interfaces that this same application offers you in different devices. This one is the desktop application. And you can see that it is fairly easy to grab different parts of the text because I'm using my mouse. So it is easy for me to highlight that, then right click, and I can just click highlight from there. And then that part of the text is highlighted. If we select this application in an Android device, this would be the type of interface that we will get. Very well, I just navigated to the exact same part and you can see that in here I have the same type of highlighting that I had on the desktop application. And in order for me to highlight the same area, I'm going to have to use my fingers and slowly moving over here so I can select the right type of text. And you can see that that magnifying glass appear on top of my uh, text because it's helping me exactly stop where I want to stop. So the device is already trying to fix the type of problem that would be solved if I were to 
use the desktop application. The same goes for an application like the iPad. We have the exact same Blue Fire Reader application on the iPad. We are in the same area of the textbook. And now what I'm going to do is select the exact same part over here. As you can see, it becomes a little bit more difficult for me to select different areas and I have to work with the text so it can become manageable. And that's probably something that we don't want to do too much because then we spend most of our time reading trying to select text. However, if the text is selected, you can click on highlight and then it will be ready. Very well, so now let's tackle the issues or the type of things that you should be paying attention that are related to your electronic device. And the very first one that I would like to cover is that there are significant differences between the EPUB format and the PDF format. Normally, students have indicated that they like to use the PDF format, but it has some basic limitations that might not make them so appropriate for mobile devices. Let me show you how this works. This is once again the publication in the Blue Fire Reader, and I am going to tap right in the middle of the screen, and that brings a series of options that I can implement. And as you can see on the lower side of the screen over here where it says settings, if I tap there, I'm going to be able to go to this other screen where I can actually change the font of the publication. Right now we cannot see the text over here because I have increased it considerably. I can also click on the minus sign. Once that I'm done, I click on save on the upper part that when we return to the text, the text has been reduced considerably. Some of the things that appear on the text, for example here, might not become well formatted. For example, we have a title at the bottom of a page, and that happens whenever you start manipulating the size of the font, and that type of repagination of the pages takes place. Now, what I'm going to do at this moment is I am going to exit the specific EPUB publication, and I'm going to access the exact same textbook, but in a PDF format. I don't know if you can notice that there's margins around the page. And also there's a page number down here. So if I tap once again in the center of the screen, well, I'm going to arrive to a similar pop-up bar from the bottom and the top. And whenever I go back here to the AA settings to change the size of the font, I will be taken once again to that screen. However, it will not be available for me. In other words, it is often the case that when you use PDFs, the reading applications that will, you will use do not allow you to change the font of the text. And then it becomes somewhat of a problem because it depends what device you're using and what is the actual size of the screen that you're using, that this text will be readable or not. For example, in this case, I am using a nine inch Nexus device. And if I'm using the device right in front of my face, yes, I can read well the text. However, if I pull it a little bit further back or I use my cell phone to access this text, chances are I will not be able to read it. So that is a big difference between the PDF format and the EPUB format. In the EPUB format, you can change the size of the font. In the PDF format, chances are you won't. The next one is related to controlling the brightness of your device. It really depends on what environment you are that increasing the brightness or decreasing the brightness might be a good idea for your reading experiences. And you might have a better experience reading a text in the sunlight if you really increase the brightness all the way. And you might have a better experience 
at night reading your your book by lowering the brightness of the text the next one is related to highlighting and commenting and i'm not really going to tackle once again how to go through the process of highlighting you basically saw that you select text in the publication and then from a menu you can select to highlight or annotate or to search but the main idea that i want to tackle in this section is that your highlighting and your annotations have to have a purpose. Sometimes highlighting a text is just good for you to read. In other words, it's a way for you to engage with the text. You select parts of it, you read it, you think about it, and then you continue reading. If your purpose is different than, than reading and facilitating your reading and your purpose for highlighting and annotating is studying, that's a completely different story because the type of things that you're going to be able to select in your text are going to be able to, you're going to be able to retrieve them later on and it depends how you retrieve them that you will be able to um, study well from them or not so let me give you an example using once again the android device now that i have done these highlighting and some annotation of the text I'm gonna tap right in the center again and over here where it says bookmarks on the Android device I am going to click there and now I'm gonna see each one of the highlights that I made and each one of the annotations that I made all perfectly laid out in a list so that is the best thing about annotating or highlighting in an e-reader that later on most applications are going to allow you to retrieve that information to compile it and put it together in a single place. Some applications are going to allow you to export your highlights and your comments into a file and that would be very beneficial especially if you want to print that file later on. So when you choose an application to read electronic in electronic devices, just be aware that this is a possibility and you can find it in some of them. And finally, another type of highlighting and annotation that you can do is for the purpose of analyzing the text. So it really depends what it is the purpose of your highlighting and com commenting the text that you will use this in different ways. However, remember, it is about you being in control of the device and for you to have a very well-defined purpose at the time of highlighting and annotating the book. The next part is searching the book and searching the book might be very good for specific reasons. You might have a physics books that you will like to explore in a very quick way by trying to look at the, all the formulas in the text. So you can type the word formula in the search window and then you're going to start bumping into all the instances in which the word formula was utilized in your text and that might be very helpful for you. Also, it can be very useful to search for text whenever you change the font and all the pages got um, a different number and everything got repaginated. And then at that moment, the professor says, go to page 73 and you can ask for the first words of the paragraph and you can search for those words. And at that moment, you will arrive to the right location in the device. Another benefit of using electronic devices, and it can become very, very powerful, is your ability to go to the internet and to search for things. So you can highlight areas of the text and you will go to the internet and you will find things that will expand the knowledge that you're trying to get. But there's obviously always the danger that once that you are out of your reading environment and out into a browser for browsing the web, that you will stay on the web distracted by other things. And finally, something that is very, very useful for me, English is my second language, but it can be used by anybody, is the dictionary that normally comes with all applications. If you click on a word and you select it, most probably a pop-up window will appear telling you the meaning of the word. And that can be extraordinary for learning purposes. And I do recommend that you use those type of things as often as you can. 
Now let's tackle some of the human related factors that might affect your reading and for that I am going to jump here and the first one is to turn off all the notifications. It could be from your own reading device or it can be from any other device that you have near you. So the main idea is for you not to be distracted by this and that which is quite possible in an electronic device and for you to be able to just focus on the reading itself. So in order to have that sustained periods of reading it might be a good idea for you to say at the beginning of your reading I'm going to read for an hour and for an hour straight do nothing else but just that and probably you will do quite well if you do those type of if you follow those type of practices. Other type of things might be very beneficial and it, this is individual and it depends on each student and it's related with how you work at different times of the day. Some people are night owls, so some people are morning people and you have to be self-aware in order to understand what is the best time in the day for you to read and then actually plan your day so you can read during those periods of time. The other question which is obvious is what is a good place to read and this is not only related to how comfortable you are at the time of reading which is important if you're going to read for a long period of time but also what type of environment you have around you. If it's a very busy environment, if it's a very noisy environment, you're going to have a lot of distractions coming into your reading, reading period of time and that might not be too helpful. So you can find a space where you can concentrate and read for one hour if that's what you decided to do. Another type of um, recommendation is that reading is different than studying. So while you're able to read quite well by using your device, it might be the case that it's not that easy to study using the device. So I do recommend in this case that you print individual pages that come from your electronic book and you use both things at once. You use the electronic pages for you to reference the material or to read the material and then you use the print publication to summarize what you're doing or any other type of combination between print and electronic will do. But the main idea is that you don't have to settle for one of the two. And finally, practicing and using the apps. This is a question about cognitive load how much your brain has to work in order for you to be able to do a good reading of a text. And if a lot of your effort is spent controlling the reading application, well, most of your brain resources are going to be tackling that and not what you're supposed to tackle, which is the course material. So if you're spending too much time, remember you have to become self-aware, if you're spending too much tra time trying to control the application per se, then it might not be a good idea for you to read in an electronic device. So you have to balance how much time I want to spend learning the device and how much time I want to spend reading the content that I need to read. And obviously consider both media. So these are all the human recommendations regarding reading on electronic devices but I would like to finish by saying that reading well is a skill in itself. You can read at a very basic level or you can start implementing different strategies for reading and those precede electronic devices for many many years. So you can find a lot of information online about how to read textbooks or how to read books and many of the recommendations for print media is going to be are going to be applicable for an electronic medium as well. Very well. So this is all the information about how to read on electronic devices. As you can see, we didn't engage in too many technical matters, but we did discuss a lot of the human and device related matters that can have an impact on your reading. Having said this, I hope that you have the best experiences and you choose the best medium in order for you to learn the material for your course.